Greetings, I am Tantus Naravan Jacobin, Lord and Emperor of the Jacobin Empire, and welcome. It's once again time to talk about some other role-playing games, and it's once again time to talk about Bessem, Big Eyes, Small Mouth. So, what are we going to talk about today? Attributes. The big thing that I really should talk about is attributes, because most of your character points, as I've talked about, are going to be spent on attributes. You're going to spend so many of them here. So, what are attributes? Attributes are your innate talents, your racial abilities, your superpowers, your companions, your pets, your equipment, your gear, your weapons, your skills, anything and everything that sort of details your character is most likely going to be an attribute. There are so many attributes listed and and all of them are really great. And this includes things like, you know, if you have magic or spells or superpowers, whatever your character, whatever sort of theme your character has, psychic power, they're all listed under attributes. Now, attributes go from 0 to 16, but traditionally, you're only going to get up to 6 if you want to purchase up to that number. Your game master can give you permission to go above 6, but you have to ask him specifically. Now, certain ones say you can just do it anyway, but most of them, 0 to 6. Zero, you have none in it. Six, you're going to have the maximum you're going to have. Now, most of these progress in various ways. You can progress, you can progress linear, which they go up in certain numbers at certain speeds. And you can progress special ways that it might say, or even reverse, that the more ranks in it, the smaller whatever number gets, and maybe the small number is really important to you. Now, they do give you the option of choosing some templates. Templates are sort of like races or archetypes you could play as, and they speed this process up a certain amount. Because each template has a point value to it, and so when you purchase it, you're purchasing it with some of your character points. Now, each power you choose is also going to have a source. The source could be something like psychic, magic, racial. There's an entire list in the book, but you don't have to choose from that list. You could talk to your GM, the two of you could work out some other kind of source that you're going to have. It should be noted that it uses metric numbers. That's very important because everything's going to be break down to kilometers, into grams, kilometers, grams, degrees centigrade, all that sort of things. Metric is the numbers you're going to use for the system. So each attribute you're going to choose from has levels, which is going to define the sort of basic levels you go through. It's going to have a relevance, a cost per level, meaning how many points you're going to have to spend for each level of it which can range from 1 to 10. It can be very expensive for certain attributes and very cheap for other ones. It also tells you a relevant stat that's connected. To your attribute might be connected to your body, it might be connected to your mind, it might be connected to your soul, depending on whatever your character has. It also tells you progression. Now, there's a chart towards the beginning of attributes that tells you progressions between fast, slow, and medium, and from scores from 1 to 16, and tells you the kind of numbers you would have for that progression. It gives you kind of an idea on how these progressions work and what you get for those progressions sort of number-wise. And then each attribute, of course, has a description that talks to you about it. The attributes will know what the sort of basic max level is. Again, when I'm telling you, you know, it tells you if you can go to 6, if you go to 16, if you go somewhere in between, it will tell you. It will tell you what the normal is. And of course, GM permission could go above that again, just you have to talk it over with your GM. And the other thing a lot of these attributes will tell you is if you're just a normal human, which ones you can take. So if you're in a game where there's no superpowers, when you're just normal humans in some kind of human-based adventure, it'll tell you that. It'll tell you what you can take and what you're allowed to Now let's talk about some examples of tribute. So first off that I'm going to talk about is attack and defense combat mastery. There are two different attributes technically, but both of these affect various values on it. Now I haven't talked about these, the attack combat value and the defensive combat value, but they're pretty big values on your character. I'm going to talk about them later and how you figure them out and what they mean. This attribute raises those, so that means it's a very important stat. Now also you can get armor, which you take less damage from attacks. Companion, it spends points to get a companion who has points of his own to spend to build a character. And there's combat techniques, which give you little special things you can do in combat. Dynamic powers, which give you this sort of pool of points which you can spend to get other powers. And it usually has to do with some kind of theme, and depending on what theme you take depends on how expensive it is per rank and dynamic powers. But it means you've got this kind of shifting abilities dependent on your control of certain elements and certain sort of concepts. Like time's one of them, light, fire, those are various examples. Each one has a different point value. And if you want one more creative, you can talk to your GM, who will tell you how expensive it is. Then there's also energy bonus and toughness. You get energy points and hit points. Energy bonus gives you bonus energy points, toughness gives you bonus hit points. That's how it works. Now you can get enhanced stat, which you can raise your basic three stats, and that's sort of a special thing that like if powers would be dampened, you'd lose these stats, and it technically costs a little cheaper than it normally would, but you have to think of it as like a magical or special enhancement to those stats rather than just natural. You can get extra attacks and extra defenses. There's only so many attacks and so many defenses you can normally do in a turn without taking penalties. I'll explain that later on in sort of talking about the rules section, but this gives you extras of them. 
you can buy items, and this item could be any sort of item you can think of. They do give lists of items and how many po points they cost, or it could be an item that mimics a power that you might have. That's like the difference between general gear and a special item that would mimic a power. So maybe you have like a jetpack that gives you the ability to fly, and that would be an item. Now you can also have organizational ties, that gives you ties with an organization. You can have wealth, it gives you money. You can have skills, there's an entire list of skills, and each skill, depending on how important it is to your game, gives you how many points it costs. Now, the general ones they give in the book could be different for your game, and your game master will tell you. So if in a fantasy game where certain skill is better in a fantasy game than a modern game, maybe it's more expensive. But if you're in a modern game where that fantasy type skill is no longer that important, it's gonna be less points. That's the kind of thing you have to think about. And then the last one that I'm gonna talk about is weapon, which is the most customizable, and it basically is your special attacks. It could be like Goku's Kamehameha, it could be Ryo's Hudoken, kind of powers like that, you know, those aren't the only type of powers. It could be Naruto's Rasenga. It's a weapon sort of attack. It could actually be in the form of a weapon, or it could be some kind of attack that you have. And they actually give ways of increasing the abilities and decreasing it. They sort of have positive and negative qualities you can add to it, which increase or decrease the rank accordingly, and you can sort of balance them out to customize your weapon the way you want it to be. Now, there, of course, there's a lot of other abilities out there. There's a whole list of them, and a lot of them are based around different superpowers, ma different magical abilities, all kinds of crazy things like that. And you can take any number of them that you want, as long as you have the points for them, and as long as it fits within the purview of whatever game you're playing. You should really check in with your GM when you're choosing abilities to see if it would be something that he thinks is okay for you. Now, there is another section right after this, what I'm going to talk about, but it's an optional section. It's the customization section, and you have to talk to your GM if he's going to allow customization. It's an entire list of positive and negative qualities that you could add to any of your powers to either increase or decrease the points it costs you to buy them. You can never go below one for the cost, even if you put a lot of negative qualities on a power. It can never go below one. So you can never have it for free. But the fact is, it adds a new level of customization to all of your abilities that maybe you want to increase the range, you want to increase this, you want to do that. There's so many options in the book that it can make it that all these attributes are very different between every player. So that's all I'm going to talk about today about Bessem. I talked about all the ability. I'm going to start talking about some of the gameplay details next time. Thank you so much for watching. Please, if you have any questions, anything to say, leave it in the comments below. We're always looking for more citizens, so please join the Empire, subscribe. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this video. We're always looking for that feedback. And if you are a citizen and do enjoy these videos, please share it with other people. Spread the word. We're always looking for more people to join. And you out there are some of the sources of more people to come in and see these videos. Thank you very much. And until the next time, I bid you farewell.